Hello and welcome, my name is Vais, and today we're having a look at what's new inside of ZBrush 2019. Um, I originally recorded this video live, but my gain was set way too high on my microphone, so the audio was awful. So I'm having to do a voiceover, so that's why the, uh, the video might not sync up to what I'm saying. But uh, hopefully we'll make do. So um, I'm, I have a feeling this version of uh, ZBrush is going to be a bit um, hit or miss, depending on what kind of um, Z ZBrusher you are. Uh, it might be the best version ever or a little bit underwhelming. Hopefully you're, you're excited by the new features. So first off, we're going to uh, load um, a model, uh, the model I did last week, uh, Salmon, based on um, Johannes Helgeson's work. Um, please do have a look at that video and at, at his gallery because he's an amazing artist. Uh, so now we have something to uh, look at. So uh, first off, we're going to talk a bit about the um, quality of life improvements. Um, mainly now uh, the uh, folder options. Uh, that is something that is uh, new uh, in this version. Uh, so now you under subtool palette you have this a new folder button and um, if you hit that you create a folder that you can give a name to and then you can place all the subtools you want inside of that folder and that gives you um, gives you the power to organize um, your subtools and if you have a lot of subtools this can be very very useful to have a, a, a cleaner workflow. Uh, or if you're working with different versions of a, a same model. And you also have this uh, little wheel on the side here. And if you click on it, you have all the options to control what is inside that folder. Um, you can delete, rename, merge, uh, boolean folder, everything that is in that folder, short the polypaint, hide the polypaint, uh, merge it, Merge it down, merge it down, up. And then you can also, um, by hitting that little I button, you can also uh, hide everything, hide that entire folder very quickly. So very useful feature um, if you are working with a lot of subtools. I can also give myself a little bit more space that would have made things easier to uh, move inside that uh, folder. We also have a new version of a Z remesher. Um, the previous version is still there. Um, I call it quality of life. They show it off as a more of a new feature, but I think it's more of a quality of life because uh, it's really, really great and very, very powerful for hard surface models. Uh, it gives you a cleaner mesh that tries to match the um, target uh, number you're aiming for a lot better. Um, it gives you a cleaner result with less polygons, so it's very, very good. It also generates uh, polygroups for you, even creasing if you want. Um, it tries to read the, the model pretty, pretty well. It's a bit faster as well, um, but it, uh, it, all the benefits are really mainly for, um, uh, for uh, hard, surface, hard surface models, not organic models. For organic models, you're not going to see a huge difference. Um, so this it's more quality of life for uh, hard surface artists uh, or for if you're trying to create a low poly version uh, with a specific poly count in mind, uh, it's going to be a huge uh, improvement for you. Uh, but if you're working more organic shapes like I do, uh, it's a little, little less of an upgrade. So depending on who you are, this might, um, this might be a, a great thing or a, a little bit underwhelming. What is also new is the uh, intersection masker uh, that will allow you to mask off where two subtools uh, touch each other. So it's um, a different way to approach uh, complex masking. Uh, it can be very, very powerful if you have complex shapes and uh, a lot cleaner to produce uh, than uh, masking by hand or using uh, masks. It's like having a mask you can lay down in 3D uh, compared to having a 2D uh, mask with an alpha that you're applying on a 3D surface. So it can give you cleaner results and uh, better results. It's something to try out. Also, the Z color, and that is a way to uh, store um, and share and reuse a color palette. 
Uh, so if you're working with uh, multiple people or do you, if you are working, if you want to reuse the same color and you don't want to have to color pick something that might be a little bit off, uh, that's a great way to, um, to go about that. Okay, now jumping on to the big features, uh, this is the one I'm the most excited about, is the new camera system. They call it the universal camera system and that allows you to use uh, closer to real life cameras. So you have focal length settings, you can set your own. Um, uh, so very, very strong. And um, you can also uh, store them. So previously you had to um, use the timeline to, uh, to store a view. But now you can uh, set a focal length and then uh, store it and you can store multiple versions of uh, the camera system. So you can have different focal lengths, uh, different types of cameras, different angles and store them and they will be stored with your uh, ZBrush project file. And it's a very, very powerful tool. And what's even more powerful with this is that you can... If you're using uh, an FBX file, um, you can export the camera to another uh, package. That way, uh, if you're, for instance, like me, you don't want to, you want to, you have your polypaint, but you don't want to uh, Z remesh or redo the topology to have clean UVs, to have a clean, to export your texture. Um, you can now render the scene with a ZBrush and then export with the camera and re-render it inside in another 3D package like Maya or 3ds Max to have a perfectly clean and good looking ambient occlusion or uh, a Z-depth math. And then you can stack them all inside of uh, Photoshop or any 2D package and they will line up perfectly because they are using the same camera. So very, very cool. Um, you can also import a camera. So if you're working inside of a 3D package, you can import that camera inside of um, ZBrush and that will line up. So if you're working on something, uh, if you're compositing something into a scene and it matches inside your 3D package, it matches the, the, the position, you can match it with your camera and then export it inside of ZBrush, work it from that view. So you're only working on something that will be visible in the end product and then you can export it back, it will line up perfectly. So this is one of the um, the best upgrades for me. Uh, this is the one I'll be using the most inside of um, ZBrush uh, 2019. Okay, now jumping to the next big feature, probably the biggest feature, at least the one they spend the most time on, is the non-photorealistic rendering. Um, uh, and I think it's a great move on their part. Um, but now you have all, when you go into Lightbox, you have all these render sets and re render sets are presets. You can jump on, jump, uh, start your rendering uh, from. So all these presets to have non-realistic renderings. And I think it's a great move because I don't think uh, ZBrush is very good at, um, at realistic renderings. So having a more stylized look is a great move on their part. So you, you hit BPR and then you can load all these, um, all these presets and it'll, it'll give you different looks. But if you want under render, you can uh, use the filter system. Here you can see you have nice uh, little textures in the shadow. Um, if you um, if you go under render, you have render filters, and this is how they achieve that look. So you can add as many filters as you want, have different effects on every filter, and this is how you get that stylized look. So you can see here we have this very uh, cartoony. The colors are a bit too overblown, but it looks a bit like um, like a French a French style rendering. This is more of a cartoony flat look. Doesn't look, doesn't look too bad. Kind of digging that one. Flat color. So here you can pick the style you want. Uh, it may or may not. What is cool is that it's it's great to open old projects and uh, and have a look at them under those um, those uh, new rendering settings. But you have here you have a great selection. So if you're not too much into it. This is a great selection of tools to to pick from to have this pixelated look. Um, but um, if you're not into it, you can still um, just use that baseline 
or create your own if you want. I have a very specific look if you're looking for that uh, into the Spider-Verse look. Uh, you can go into the render um, filters and this is where you have all these different layers and all this different tools. A lot of information there. Um, way too big for this video. But um, just to keep, keep, get you started, you can uh, use that to uh, your advantage. But if you're not into um, how the uh, style has looked and you just want to render your scenes, now, imagine that if you have your setup, light setup the way you want, you have your render settings the way you want, you have your everything set up the way you want, you can store that as a render set. So if you're not into the stylized look, but you want to save those settings for a different project, uh, previously you had to open your project and load your model inside that project, delete the old model, re-render, and that's, way, that's how you had your light set up and that's how you kept everything. Now you can save it as a render set and apply it to any uh, model you have so it's great to uh, have a quick b quicker faster workflow and will um, help in that sense even if you're not into the stylized look but the stylized look um, really breaks off the uh, the 3d uh, the 3d look in a, in a nice way and also you can save those passes and send them to Photoshop and then you can compose composite them inside of uh, Photoshop so you can use different styled uh, different style of render so you could render the background with a filter then render re-render the character with a different filter then compo composite them both in inside of ZBrush or you could um, have a look a render look inside of uh, ZBrush but then you could export and have the ambient occlusion pass inside of um, inside of uh, Maya or Max here I'm going to turn off the poly paint because you can see all those black and white uh, versions. Uh, they, are, they are not going to work so well with the poly paint. So I'm going to turn them off and have a look at the model with this. So this is very fun, uh, very cool. Um, it's a great way to, um, to look at old models or work with new models using this technique because you can have a preview in real time if you want it. Um, so something very, very powerful. Um, definitely um, something you should have a look at uh, here we're gonna have that look at black and white anime style that looks it looks so cool um, they, they're really really uh, they you can achieve really really nice effects um, that don't look 3d even though the model is 3d so a lot of tools you can see you could apply textures to shadows apply textures to background automatically and you only show up when you hit the bpr for most of them i think the flat flat lighting you can have it in real time but the uh, the texture look on this texture shadow will only appear when you're hitting bpr so it won't reflect your workflow is what i'm saying so very cool very powerful um I think uh, this is what took them the most work. If you're not too much into this um, this style, it might not be that interesting to you. But I, I do suggest you at least try and uh, uh, and open old models into it. So here now we're going to have a look at the uh, what's they call it? This sub tool. The lost my notes. The snapshot 3D. That's it. Uh, so this is a new, this is something that was previously inside of ZBrush. So it's not something you couldn't do before, but now they've uh, streamlined it in a way that it's much faster. It saves you a lot of steps. So it's a bit more complicated. Um, I've never actually used it. Um, I'm, it's brand new. I've opened it for the first time and I'm here doing it for the first time for you guys. I'll probably, uh, I think this warrants a, a different video, but essentially now under Spotlight, you can save uh, a bunch of alphas and you can have them inside of a, a grid and then you can pick these alphas and you can from these alphas create uh, an extrusion and then you can also combine before creating the extrusion you can combine all the alphas together to create a new alpha so you can um, pick a, 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 Q, uh, a square and then um, punch a, a circle, a hole into it before making hitting the snapshot button and that will give you 
the extrusion. There are also snapping tools. Um, so very, very powerful. Uh, it's not something you can do before, but it's just much faster if you know how to do it. So this is probably something I will do in a, in a dedicated video. And that is going to uh, wrap things up for this video. If you have any questions or comment or you want to see something covered, covered more in depth, um, please do leave it in the comments and I'll probably do a video on it if I can um, master it a bit more. And uh, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.